The Squat Home Worlds or sometimes known by Sam and TG as the Domain of Squats, Squat Territories, Spissdorf Fortresses was, the canonicity is two decades old, with the reintroduction of the squats, it's now up to debate, the areas in which one can find our beloved space midgets in the early days of 40k. Unlike other imperial aligned entities in the galaxy, the squat homeworlds enjoy a significant degree of autonomy, whilst Dijou, the squad homeworlds are part of the Imperium of Man. De facto it is its own self-sustaining and self-sufficient society in like places such as Ultramar or the Adeptus Mechanicus which has an interdependent and semi-autonomous relationship with Terra. Of course, we all know how the squats were squatted soon after making the debut, with the Tyranids somehow targeting only the squat worlds whilst leaving the rest of the Imperium controlled space right next door to the squats largely untouched. This is ridiculous when taking into account that the territories of the squats weren't some small speck like the TAU Empire, but rather, a significantly large domain that took up half of the entire galactic core. This is made worse when taking into consideration that it was completely out of character for the Imperium to stop and do nothing against such a large incursion of Tyranid forces in an area considered as strategically important for them. Games Workshop's shitty excuse explanation in removing the squats from canon had never really stood well within the community let alone actual squat players. With the return of the glorious Spissdorfs, the whole squatted cannon has been thrown into the ocean of ambiguity. Seeing how ridiculously old the fluff was, it wouldn't be surprising that the whole Tyranid affair will be ridicon due to how silly it was in context. I mean hey, GW is willing to ridicon major fluff from well-established factions. So it wouldn't surprise us if they will do the same to the squats if they are proven popular enough to be reintroduced into 40k tabletop proper. Historical overview The squat homeworlds were all worlds filled with rich mineral resources, which led the human ancestors of the squats to lay down, settle and mine the shit out of. Most of these were located within the galactic core where unique and rare minerals were found in abundance in exchange for being sterile and barren of life of course. But for the early human colonists, it was a gold mine as Terra ran out of all of its resources, so the search for raw materials was needed. Their planet's gravity is great, usually two or three times that of Terra. Their atmospheres are either thin or non-existent. Even those planets with atmospheres are blasted by tremendous storms. But hey who gives a shit about all of that when you have all the resources to make you rich, and rich the squats got. Like the Gulf states, the squats quickly took a monopoly on these minerals and started to get wealthy, and with money comes an increase in development and technological advancements. These planets became mining worlds and with the coming age of strife, the squats got themselves the good end of the stick by both inhabiting hostile worlds and cranking up the technological kazoo when the rest of humanity plunged into a galactic wide shitstorm. Squat history can be split into several eras. Age of founding The first is the age of founding, which is the squat equivalent of the dark age of technology. This is not technically the first period of the squats as they had yet to evolve but it is the time of the founding of the colonies that would become the squat homeworlds. Almost 20,000 years ago contact between these planets and Terra was almost continuous. Testament to the importance of these colonies. Terra also kept the worlds well supplied with that which they could not produce for themselves in adequate amounts, primarily food. This period lasted until the Age of Strife. Age of Isolation The Age of Isolation corresponds with the earlier part of the Age of Strife. Around 18,000 years ago, the galactic core was cut off from the rest of human space by the devastating warp storms of the Age of Strife. Many worlds were swallowed by the warp and disappeared forever. Others were trapped in stasis and became lost. Most survived although they were separated from Earth and all contact was lost with the rest of the galaxy. During this time of isolation and danger the squat worlds still in contact with each other began to organize for their mutual defense. It was at this time that the squats began to refer to their worlds as the home worlds. The home worlds remained isolated for thousands of years and their inhabitants learned to survive in a universe that was becoming increasingly hostile. Those 
that survived grew and prospered. Settlements were enlarged and fortified into impregnable strongholds. They soon developed alternative technologies to make up for the lack of supplies from Earth. During the isolation the complex system of engineer guilds developed. These guilds were responsible for preserving technical knowledge and skills as well as training technicians miners and other specialists necessary for the strongholds the guilds transcended the strongholds allowing every stronghold to benefit from the preserved knowledge as well as new advances in technology during this age the leagues first began to develop from strongholds allied for trading and defense purposes age of trade the age of trade took place during a slight abatement of the warp storms during the age of strife and led to the squats encountering other races including orcs and elder at the beginning of the age of trade some strongholds were attacked but the aliens quickly realized that the squats were armed to the fucking teeth and prepared to go down fighting and that trade was a more practical arrangement the squats took full advantage of their tremendous mineral wealth which they traded for weapons foodstuffs and high technology systems to this day squat hydroponic plants developed with elder help are among the most efficient food sources in the Imperium. The squats remained carefully neutral in the numerous conflicts between Elder and Orcs, maintaining trade links with both sides. There were inevitably small wars from time to time, but for the most part the squats complex structure of treaties and trade agreements maintained a stable peace. Age of Wars The Age of Trade lasted for nearly three millennia, but finally collapsed when an enormous Orc battle fleet, under the command of Grunhag the Flare, attempted a full-scale invasion of the homeworlds. Losses on both sides were astronomical, with vicious tunnel fights through the mine workings and bloody pitched battles in the squats underground settlements. The squats appealed to their elder trading partners for help against the invading orcs, but none was received. The Age of Wars, as it became known, is regarded by the squats as the blackest chapter in their history and the double betrayal by orcs and elder gave rise to a cultural enmity which still persists. Many strongholds were wiped out by the orcs, and the traditional epic ballad known as the Fall of Imbark commemorates one such destruction. Even today expeditions are mounted from the squat homeworlds in search of lost strongholds, and these expeditions are often accompanied by Adeptus Mechanicus priests, eager to rediscover lost squat technology to burrow from. So I hear you guys are into thick big titty wafers. Well we got you covered at nickbedlier.co.uk. One stop shop for coom jar models. However we do sell a lot more than just smart models we got everything for running any fantasy settings and even some not grim dark science fiction models. In fact we even have some anime inspired models and video game. But if models is not your thing we also have some role playing adventures and dnd 5e meme subclasses. Also every video we will be giving away all our homebrew content to a subscriber of the channel. All you got to do to be in with a chance is subscribe. Today's winner is this guy. Well done. Claim your prize by contacting us via email at nickbedeercontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video. Age of Rediscovery The Age of Rediscovery was the most recent phase of squad history, corresponding to the Great Crusade and the current age of the Imperium. As the Imperium recovered from the Age of Strife and began to reunite the scattered worlds of humanity, the squad homeworlds were rediscovered and contact with the Imperium was established. The Imperium found that a distinct culture had developed on the homeworlds and that the squats had moved outwards through the galaxy, extending their domains. Often they settled harsh planets similar to their own homeworlds, but they also occupied more conventional worlds able to support normal human civilization. Age of the Imperium The current phase in squat history, it essentially details the various treaties between the squats and the Imperium. The experiences of the previous millennia has left the squats with a strong sense of cultural unity and a fiercely independent nature, and instead of rejoining the Imperium as subject worlds, the homeworlds negotiated a series of treaties which enabled them to keep their independence. The racial character of the squats, hardworking, tenacious, honorable, and inimical to alien races, 
was almost perfect from the imperial point of view and the imperium was content to allow them a great degree of self-government. A detailed description of their relationship can be read below. Squat Imperium relations first contact with the squats by the imperium began during the Great Crusade as the emperor's forces reached the worlds near the galactic core. Many of these worlds were the squat homeworlds and Squats being Spissdorfs and Spissdorfs being just regular dwarfs with tech. Conflicts became inevitable. Suffice to say, the Space Marine Legions got their shit kicked in. Who would have wondered that 8 foot tall super soldiers would have trouble trying to fight in 5 foot by 5 foot tunnels with no cover whatsoever. Here's a fun hint. MP's forces got creamed so hard it led directly to the development of the Mark III power armor. The Emperor with all his infinite wisdom, decided that being on friendly terms with midgets all armed with D-cannons and rapid firing plasma machine guns is probably a good idea rather than engaging a war that might as well be the Imperium's Vietnam. So a treaty was signed to sweep the whole first contact shenanigans under the bus and get back to business. The squad home rules as aforementioned have long been part of the Imperium, but enjoy a level of autonomy greater than the ordinary self-governed Imperial world. Hell, the squats are so autonomous that not even the administratum can touch them. Instead, squat homeworlds are ruled by strongholds of leagues. Nonetheless, the homeworlds, while governing themselves without interference from the Adeptus Terra, are expected to follow imperial policy on wider issues. Both the Imperium and the Squats benefit from this arrangement. The homeworlds provide troops for the Imperial Guard. The Imperial Guard also provides military support to the homeworlds when necessary, as they would any other threatened Imperial worlds. Space NATO. Additionally the Squats trade their mineral wealth exclusively with the Imperium in return for some sweet. Sweet Moolah. The Adeptus Mechanicus are highly interested in the squats and the homeworlds for several reasons. Squats possess a higher level of technical expertise which seems to come naturally to the race. Additionally, the homeworlds as a whole possess the greatest amount of surviving STC equipment in the Imperium. The squats are said to allow the Adeptus Mechanicus free access to squat technology. However it is also said the squats keep their technology from other races. Regarding the Adeptus Mechanicus as little more than sorcerers mired in superstition. The relationship between the homeworlds and the Imperium is therefore generally peaceful, although through history has been punctuated by bouts of war and bitterness. The Squats and the Imperium trade to their mutual benefit. Both races also share many enemies, especially Orcs making it in their best interests to cooperate. The Squats do not follow the Imperial cult, rather they revere their ancestors. Squats fighting alongside the Imperial Guard often adopt the Emperor into their beliefs, as a guardian of their ancestors. Squat technology is based upon the heavy mining equipment they brought with them to the homeworlds. During their isolation from the rest of humanity they adapted it for other uses. Notably Exo Armor which was engineered from heavy mining suits. Squats continued to innovate and invent while humanity sank into a dark age. As a result, the Squats have developed technologies such as Neoplasma and Warp Cores far in advance of anything the Imperium owns. Some Squat technologies were absorbed into the Imperium especially tunneling vehicles and weaponry such as the termite. Strongholds Strongholds are squat settlement centers. They were generally founded during the original colonization and those produced later are known as neholds. Strongholds also often join together under leagues to form defensive pacts. Generally a stronghold develops around a mine and its associated living quarter although some later developments were not associated with mining. A hereditary lord ruled each stronghold and was protected and supported by the hearth good the hearth good were the elite of a squad army and the servants to the lord while also protecting the lord when he went to war each stronghold had a group of brotherhood or war brethren which formed the core of the squad armed forces for the stronghold every squad had an obligated 30-70 year service period although they may not be called upon to fight until they had sired two sons and raised them to maturity this helped protect the continuity of the race from the stronghold
strongholds military activities. A squad could then retire from active duty with his honor and probably some wealth and take up a position of responsibility in his family's business. The Brotherhood was often also seen as a mercenary force. In times of peace warriors were traded for resources to either fight for the Imperium or for other strongholds. Another member of the aristocracy was the Warlord. A close relative of the Lord who was there to be placed in control of the Brotherhood in order to prevent Lords from wielding too much power and sending their troops into battles they should not be fighting. Other Lords would send their Brotherhoods on expeditions which range from locating other ancient and lost strongholds to a campaign against an alien race or piracy. Some Brotherhoods had totally turned to piracy and become known as Squat Reavers. When they returned to their stronghold they distributed the booty between the pirates and the lord of the stronghold. Squats had a requirement to provide forces for the imperial guard and this often took the form of a detachment of the brotherhood. Leagues so what are leagues well? In a nutshell, they are groups of strongholds working together for a common purpose usually mutual defense, trade or dealings with the Imperium. Leagues varied greatly in size, the smallest consisting of four strongholds and the largest consisting of over 3,000. The League of Thor was the most powerful and influential, including over 300 strongholds. The League of Norgi was the league closest to Holy Terror. Now, under the new law there exists the Leagues of Votan. Each formed around a Votan ancestor core. Votan equipped leagues seem to be the only survivors as full scale polities in the Imperium. But at least some clans are known to have survived, usually working as engineers, miners, and mercenaries. A league usually encompasses the strongholds on more than one planet, with the latest extant being 700 known leagues total. Each league was led and dominated by a single stronghold. As some leagues were virtually nations with distinct cultures, Squats often identified themselves with the league their stronghold belonged to. The Squats had a strong sense of mutual preservation as it had been known for rival leagues to go to war with each another. Such occasions could lead to lasting enmity, as squats were inclined to remember deeds of infamy for many generations much like the Book of Grudges from Warhammer Fantasy. The League of Thor and League of Grindel fought an unusually bitter war around 2000 years ago when settlers from both sides clashed over the exploration of the lost stronghold of Dargon. The war that followed resulted in the destruction of several strongholds and many key victories for the League of Thor including the capture of two other leagues. Peace only came with the huge orc invasion of Grunhag the Flare which obliged all the leagues to unify against their mutual foe. Although the war ended with the rout of the orcs, the two leagues remained distrustful rivals and both sides considered the other side owing them debts of blood and honor.